What if the food you eat could help manage mental health conditions like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia? Researchers are uncovering how the ketogenic diet may provide a natural metabolic approach to some of the toughest mental health challenges that we are facing. Hello everyone, it's Dr. Tidman. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out another research review. I'm going to be reviewing an article today by Choi et al. on ketones for the brain, natural approaches to bipolar and schizophrenia, sleep, mood, and behavior. So I hope this information is helpful. Remember to subscribe and drop a comment below if this was helpful information for you. We're going to introduce the topics and define the terminology, review the study details, review the results and the conclusions, and then of course I always give you my tips and takeaways at the end. So stay tuned. So what is bipolar disorder? Bipolar disorder is formally known as manic depression. It was known that way for decades. It's a brain disorder characterized by distinct periods of elevated mood, that's mania or hypomania, and depressed mood. These mood shifts involve significant changes in energy, activity level, and the ability to complete daily tasks. The severity and pattern of these episodes defines what the specific type of bipolar disorder is such as bipolar type 1, which is mostly characterized by the manic episodes you see at the top of this figure, or bipolar 2, which is mostly comp uh, characterized by hypomania and depressive symptoms that you see towards the bottom of this figure. So what is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a chronic brain disorder that severely impairs a person's ability to perceive reality, think clearly, and function normally in daily life. Some of the key symptoms are hallucinations, which you're seeing and hearing things, delusions, which is a false belief about something, and negative symptoms like a lack of emotion or motivation, some cognitive symptoms affecting memory, attention, decision-making, and using information effectively. The diagnosis requires the presence of at least two of these symptoms you see on this slide, but they have to include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech or behavior for at least a month. So that's the diagnosis criteria for schizophrenia. It's important to define these. So sleep, we know what sleep is. We know it's a critical regulator of our metabolic processes. It also has a lot to do with helping our body maintain a balance or what we call homeostasis. It also is the state which helps our body control oxidative stress. Disruption of sleep and disruption of our circadian rhythms contribute to the onset of mental health issues like bipolar and schizophrenia. These conditions often coexist with sleep disruption or sleep disorders. Other sleep disorders to think about are things like REM sleep disorder or obstructive sleep apnea. These are uh, conditions that sometimes go unrecognized or undiagnosed. Even chronic sleep deprivation has been associated with an increase in oxidative stress and inflammation and worsening mood symptoms. So this involves people who maybe work shift work. They work all night, try to sleep during the day, and then once they establish a routine, maybe their shift changes to a day shift and they have to disrupt their sleep again. 
So the ketogenic diet we know has been applied in situations of dysfunctional brain metabolism. And we know that this brain metabolism can be improved with fatty acid um, use and how it derives ketones from the fatty acids that are created from the fats you eat and from your own fat stores. Ketones have been helpful in many neurological disorders, including epilepsy, which is, in my mind, the treatment of choice for the last 100 years to control seizures, and now is being used widely in Parkinson's disease. You know, if you've watched my videos, I'm a clinical researcher in Parkinson's disease and used in Alzheimer's disease. Recent clinical trials using ketogenics suggest positive improvements in symptoms of bipolar and schizophrenia. The improvements, we think, are because these ketones restore optimum mitochondrial function within the neurons within the brain. So it's a powerful, powerful tool that we can use either creating ketones from the foods we eat or creating ketones from our own fat stores that we're burning or creating ketones from ketone supplementation, ketone supplements that we consume. The researchers, Choi et al., discuss some commonalities between bipolar and schizophrenia in terms of brain function. These commonalities are further supported by the effectiveness of anti-epileptic drugs that we use for both of these conditions. Anti-epileptic drugs were initially prescribed to control seizure activity. But what we're finding is they have benefits in bipolar and schizophrenia for controlling symptoms. That leads us to a shared pathophysiology between both of these conditions. The use of anti-epileptic anti medications has been reviewed extensively with a significant impact on mood disorders, and mood disorders that happen along with epilepsy. So it's like it's addressing the causes of both conditions using ketones or the ketogenic uh, approach. Structural brain changes are also seen in bipolar disorder that resemble those same changes seen in patients with epilepsy. Isn't that interesting? Ketogenic diets show improvements in neurological symptoms, mood stability, decreasing anxiety, and reduced psychotropic medication dosages in patients with bipolar or major depressive disorders and schizophrenia. Elevated ketone levels in schizophrenia patients demonstrate positive results and improvements in executive function, that's that higher critical thinking. When you compare that to elevations in levels of blood ketones, which we call beta hydroxybutyrate. We know in Parkinson's research and other research areas and work being done by Dom D'Agostino's group for NASA, and work being done by Stephen Kunane's lab in Canada, that ketones decrease neuroinflammation caused by oxidative stress and enhance mitochondrial function. They're neuroprotective in this, in this case and reduce the presence of inflammatory cytokines, which are inflammatory molecules. So in sleep disruption, Choi et al. found that decreased total sleep time and decreased sleep efficiency 
and taking longer to get into deep sleep is related in many ways to symptoms we see in schizophrenia. Patients with psychiatric disorders, including both of these, these are other disorders, also show a higher incidence of metabolic syndrome. And you'll just see, I posted a, a video on metabolic syndrome on my channel. Go back and watch that one. It will give you the information on metabolic syndrome. When sleep is disrupted, we know that the glial cells, okay, glial cells are those cells that are called supportive or helper cells to neurons. The, they can decrease in number. They can be disrupted. And in this instance, we see a decrease in those circadian rhythms of sleep and wake cycles that are essential. So ketone bodies can function as signaling molecules to improve those circadian rhythms or sleep-wake cycles. So the conclusions that Choi et al. came up with in their article were that prolonged oxidative stress in relation to neurotransmitters has really been identified in schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The therapeutic potential of the ketogenic diet for bipolar and schizophrenia was also discussed in their article Recent clinical trials have offered um, substantial support for therapeutic ketogenics or ketogenic therapeutics, as it's also called, in working with the symptoms of these two disorders that we've reviewed. Also, we have seen in the research that patients with bipolar and schizophrenia often have associated, even undiagnosed, metabolic syndrome that accompanies their sleep disruption or maybe REM sleep disorder or obstructive sleep apnea or other conditions associated with metabolic syndrome. The beauty is the use of the ketogenic approach can benefit your symptoms of metabolic syndrome as well. So it's like treating two disorders with one treatment. Considering the neuroprotective effect of ketones and their capacity to normalize metabolic stress, oxidative stress, this is being more researched in sleep research. It seems that the authors have found this is a rational approach to try to deal with the sleep disruption and symptoms that we see in bipolar and schizophrenia. So my tips and takeaways, you can probably sing from memory now if you've watched many of my videos, but these basics are important. They support what Choi and his colleagues found, and they support the use of ketogenic therapeutics in bipolar and schizophrenia. So how do you do this? Well, of course, you reduce your daily carbohydrate and sugar intake. In mental health conditions, you may need to take those carbohydrates down to less than 10 grams per day. You may need to take them down even more. The goal is to raise your blood ketone levels, and many of the research studies I reviewed have talked about ketones above 2.0, above 3.0. So you've really got to boost those ketones up higher. When you adopt a low carb ketogenic approach and you start taking those ketones down, you're gonna reduce your whole body insulin resistance, reduce your oxidative stress, reduce the presence of inflammatory cytokines in the brain and enhance your mitochondrial function. How are you going to know what your ketones are? Yes, I ask you this all the time, don't I? You're going to obtain a blood glucose and ketone meter, and you're going to test 
your glucose and ketones every morning. This is really one of the only ways that you can see how the diet is working for you. Increase your intake of healthy fats each day to increase those ketone levels. Butter, lard, tallow, olive oil, MCT and coconut oil. These are all those natural fats that are gonna help increase your ketones. Of course, you have to take out all the processed foods, sugary drinks, sodas, other inflammatory foods like grains. All of these will impair your ability to produce blood ketones. And then exercise also helps you create ketones. So start exercising each day, even if all you can do is walk around your house. Do that. If you can start exercising more and involve some resistance training, do that. Go back and watch my two videos on resistance training and some simple techniques you can use at home. Of course, to really boost ketones, add MCT or coconut oil or some exogenous, that's outside the body, ketone supplements. And then fasting will really boost your ketones. Take your meals down to two meals a day and fast overnight for longer periods. Or occasionally take your meals down to one meal a day. Really build in fasting to boost your ketones. This is the reference by Choi and colleagues on sleep and mood disorders and the ketogenic diet in bipolar and schizophrenia, published in 2024. Thank you for dropping in to another research review on my channel. I value your input, so drop a comment below. Let me know if this information is helpful. Remember to subscribe and check out my next video on my channel. Take care, everyone.